WSDQ Dunlap, WEPG South Pittsburgh, The Copperhead, WSDT Saudi Daisy, Chattanooga. The viewpoints expressed on Liberty Works Radio Network are not necessarily those of the network, its affiliates, or sponsors. This is Liberty Works Radio Network. Now live from coast to coast and around the globe, more real talk, the kind you want, on Liberty Works Radio Network. And welcome to the Truth Attack Hour. It's Friday afternoon, and since it's Friday afternoon, I'm the host. My name's Larry B. Craft. I'm sitting here in my office in Huntsville, Alabama, and I invite you to listen into this program because we've got a good topic of conversation. You know, one of the things that America is confronting right now is this organized push to bring in Common Core. Well, I have as a guest today someone who has been on this program in the past to talk about Common Core. But since it's a real important topic, I've invited him back, and we're going to be discussing more about Common Core. My guest this afternoon is Mike Parsons. Mike, are you with us? I'm here, Larry. Well, uh, before we get into Common Core... I would like to just chat a few minutes about the presidential election. Now, I know that you have supported uh, uh, Ted Cruz in the past. You know, the Democrats are going to probably put out the Hillary Clinton if she doesn't get indicted, which is what I hope will happen. Well, what are your observations about on Hillary, having spent almost 30 years in the United States Air Force and having had an SCI clearance myself, is... Why isn't she already uh, being prosecuted? Yeah, that's what I, mean, I want to know, but I wonder if it's, it's mind-boggling to me for her. You know, if the rule of law does not apply to us equally, then we got a problem in this country. My theory, you know, I always thought that the rule of law applied to us all equally. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, white or black, uh, politician or just a regular civilian. Uh, I thought it was uh, applicable to us all. Of course, we all know you can get a, a, a good lawyer and get away with murder, but but the thought is I'm still wondering why she hasn't at least been indicted and isn't up on charges trying to defend herself. Well, you know, I've, I've been reading stuff on the Internet about, you know, the FBI is really digging into her. You know, they've given a immunity to one of the witnesses in the case, you know, that's an indication that a grand jury is afoot. Do you know anything more about the current investigation of Hillary Clinton? No, I'm, uh, you, you know a lot more about it than I do. I'm, I'm aware of what you said, and I know there's things that, you know, probably are happening that we don't know, which they're, you know, uh, clamping and being quiet on, but, you know, the for it to take as long as it's taking, I'm just totally befuddled on why is it taking so long uh, and why has she, hasn't she already been indicted? Now, yeah. I'm questioning if this government of ours, which I, I think is pretty obvious, uh, will lie and is corrupt, and that's the scary part when you can't even trust your senior leadership in the country, uh, but, again, the rule of law has to apply to us all fairly. Why, you know, the evidence or the things I've heard, the things that I know she, you know, it's uh, at least stated on the news that she had this personal server uh, at her residence and she was receiving classified information on it right there is kind of like a no-brainer right yeah, there. No <laughs> it, it doesn't matter who saw the data. It doesn't matter what clearance they had uh, on our own personal server. If I had done that, I'd already be in Fort Leavenworth in Kansas right now <laughs> in, in prison. So why is it taking so long to bring charges up on Hillary Clinton? And it also shows me uh, what I would say uh, an arrogance uh, but, uh, in a way that she thinks she's better than the people that's serving this country, and she knows better. I've heard that she's made comments like, don't send me anything with classified on it, you know, with classified markings on it. That kind of shows an arrogance to the uh, efforts we take to protect our information, our sources, uh, from the enemy, you know, the enemy that likes to oh, kill yeah. us. You know, those kind of things. So, I'm, uh, you know, that, to me, uh, as far as her being uh, 
a competing for commander in chief is kind of scary to me that she is already to me showing just a, a, a total uh, indifference to uh, absolute arrogance towards uh, what we use to protect our country some of the ways we we try to protect our lives and resources and she does it with such discard and then she's very selective in her words, which actually don't mean anything. Doesn't matter if materials has the classified markings or not. She's getting uh, everything from, uh, you know, uh, words uh, for official use only, if you will, to uh, apparently some of the highest levels of security you, we have in our country, and, and that's on her personal server. And she still hasn't been indicted. Are yeah. you kidding me? What's going on in this country? Well, she's got I all mean, the dirt on all the politicians. You know, the Clintons like to keep dirt so they blackmail people. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm just saying we, I, I, at least from uh, the news sources, from multiple news sources, we know that she was, uh, if, we, if we believe the news sources, uh, we know that this has happened. And I can't believe... Uh, that uh, she hasn't been indicted uh, right now. I mean, what else? What else yeah, no is kidding, it? Well, no you kidding, don't no have kidding. to make this much more complicated than that. <laughs> well, hey, listen, listen. Uh, we we still got to cover Common Core, but I, you know, I want to ask you some questions about the presidential election. Election, the process that's going on on the Republican side. You know, there's a lot of people that are supportive of Donald Trump. Uh, you have some reservations about Donald Trump. Can you explain to our audience what they might be? Well. Here's, you know, first of all, anybody but Hillary, okay? Anybody Hillary but Hillary, prison. except for, except for Bernie. <laughs> anybody, <laughs> anybody but Bernie and Hillary, um, whichever one of them. And I think it's a kind of a no-brainer that the Democratic Party put Bernie up there against Hillary, uh, just to make sure she didn't have any real competition. It's almost like uh, a right that it's or she's due to run, be the first woman. Somehow somebody has anointed her uh, or deemed she's the chosen one to be the first woman president. And she's actually there's, uh, you know, other women that I certainly would support being our first uh, female president of this country and a strong leader and uh, commander in chief. But you certainly don't want this flaming liberal uh Arrogant, dis, uh, just uh, yeah, just disrespectful towards the people that try to protect this country. You don't want someone like that running this country for another four and possibly eight years. So, getting back to Donald Trump, which is what you're trying to get me to talk about. Uh, I have, first of all, I have listened to Ted Cruz. I've met Ted Cruz uh, several times, and what he says and the way he says it. Uh, I like what he says. I know I he has stood, he stood his ground on the Senate floor before when others have fled and played the Democratic political correctness um, and, and waiting game that they're still waiting and they're still playing the liberal game up there in Washington, D.C., where well, he stood the ground and tried to get us back towards let's, let's uh, work with the Constitution. He is, uh, one, opposed to uh, Common Core. He uh, doesn't have uh, a whole lot of, uh, 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 let's just say he is not a supporter of the U.S. Department of Education, and he wants to make sure they're out of state's businesses. Uh, he said that when his first day in office, he would rescind all the Obama executive orders. Doesn't mean he might not rewrite some of them, but he would, you know, he's going to tear those all up, which I think a lot of us should support because Obama, under his executive orders, have used executive orders to go around Congress, which is another sore issue uh, that I have. Donald Trump. Uh, one, he's against Common Core. I heard him say the other night he's against Common Core, so that's a big plus for me. But he keeps talking about working with everybody. Now, I do believe we have to be able to work with people. But I think we've gotten into a, a mindset that all we're going to do is here's the right path that we should be on, and we keep giving up ground to where right now we're standing 
so far to the left, and, and, and we're supposed to be on the right. We're standing for, so far on the left that we're past the middle point of uh, what should be uh, tolerated in our country. And we need to make, in my opinion, some radical moves to get us back over towards the right side of the pathway because we're on the far left of the middle side, if you will, on the left side of that pathway. I think Donald Trump would not move us back towards the right where we need to be. I think, again, he would work with people, and we just end up uh, status quo. In other words, I think he is the super establishment. I think he is the super establishment. He may say things and, uh, and do things a little awkward or abrupt, but when you look at what he's saying, he isn't saying a whole lot yeah, that's uh, sure. that, that, you know, tells me we got uh, somebody in there that's a conservative. He does not come across as a conservative saying anything any more different than Rubio or any of the others were saying. Well, hey, I appreciate having your views on the presidential election, but now let's get around to the topic of conversation for the program, Common Core. Now, there may be some people here that have heard prior shows, but maybe there might, might be some new folks here. I suspect we got some new folks. Can we start off with a little bit of background about how Common Core got started? What do you know about the origins of it? Well, before we get started on on that rhetoric, uh, which is getting to be kind of like talking points nowadays. Let's let's back up and try to explain what are we talking about when we use when we just use the term Common Core because you'll hear a lot of people talk Common Core, and and all of a sudden they're talking everything and they'll start saying socialist. They'll start talking about indoctrination of our children. They'll start to talk about losing parental rights. Uh, so they'll start talking about a lot of different things, but uh, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. I was asked to go down uh, to Baldwin County uh, back in uh, late November, early December, and uh, they wanted me to uh, talk on, quote, Common Core. I said, well, I will come down there and talk. But the uh, concern is I am not going to stick just to the common core state standards. And I said, this is why. I said, if we talk about the standards, I said, first of all, any teachers in the state that like it, they can say anything, you know, they can come up and brag about them. But I said, many of the teachers that uh, hate the standards, uh, they dare not say anything because the state superintendent's already told them if they don't support common core, he'll show them the exit door. So wow. they, they're suppressed. They can't say, they can't speak out about what's happening in the schools. And, you know, a lot of people, I, I, I think the world of teachers, I was a teacher for eight years in, a, in an inner city school. And, you know, I, I totally respect what the teachers are doing. But they're, you know, quite frankly, they're not uh, war fighters uh, as far as being aggressive and, you know, willing to lean forward and fall on the barbed wire. They're, they're not that kind of person. They're there, uh, you know, they care about the kids. They want a job. they got to put butter. Uh, they got to put bread on their table and some butter on that bread. Uh, so they're there, you know, primarily you take that paycheck away, they're going to go find them something else to do. Uh, you can say it's for the children, but, you know, they got a job to do. So the teachers aren't wanting to stick their, stick their neck out that uh, are seeing what's happening in our schools. They don't want to stick their neck out and risk losing their jobs. So going along with that fact, uh, I said I will come down there and talk, but I said we got to be talking about the big picture of what we mean when we use the words common core. In other words, we got to talk about the common core state standards. we got to talk about the assessments that are aligned with the standards. you got to have assessments aligned with the standards to collect the data. And I said then the third part is the data. And what what people should be asking themselves is, what are we doing with the data? I said, uh, you know, uh, nowadays people will tell you, well, I'll save that for later. All on right, well, hey, folks, we got the music coming on. Let it go slow. We got a commercial break. We'll be back in a few minutes with more. We're talking about Common Core and the reason why we need to end it. Stay tuned. I didn't hear that music. Good enough. Now live.
live from coast to coast and around the globe. More real talk, the kind you want, on Liberty Works Radio Network. And we're back. This is the Truth Attack Hour. My guest this afternoon is one of the foremost fighters against Common Core, and he happens to be here local in North Alabama. His name is Mike Parsons. He's an expert on Common Core. And he battles the people down there in the legislature. That I mean, the Common Core folks just seem to live down there in the legislature and are trying to push this program through. Now, Mike, before the break, we were uh, kind of uh, getting into uh, a little bit of the introduction on Common Core, but we had a rude uh, break there. Can you continue? Can you continue? Well, yeah, I was trying to define what we are talking about when we use the term common core. When we're talking common core, I think I was uh, ending it saying we're talking uh, the standards, we're talking the assessments, we're talking the data, and what people need to be concerned with is the data. First of all, let's take the standards, uh, <clears throat> standards assessment, and data. If I bundled that all together and I looked at my end goal of what I'm going to do, I would be looking at starting to profile the kids and start to look at, uh, by grade eight, start to put them on a career pathway so when they go into the ninth, 10th, and 11th, 12th grades, they're on a pathway of something, whether they're going to go into uh, uh, tech or they're going to go to college, but they're on a pathway when they go to high school, assuming high school is normally 9th through 12th grades. Number two, they're going to start to use the um, uh, what they call competencies. You and I would say values uh, uh, from the uh, American Counseling School Association, American School Counselors Association, and they're going to start to introduce these value systems. Again, they call them competencies. Uh, they will start to uh, introduce them in grades K through two and grades three through five, depending on the what the, the the value system they're trying to introduce, and they will. Now, hey, look, hey, while, while we're on this, can I stop you right there? When you're saying value systems, yes, they're gonna they're gonna try to teach morality to the kids. They're gonna be doing engaged in political uh, activities. You know, like your parents and you need to be anti-gun. You need to be uh, in favor of Obamacare. Is that what you're talking about? Well. Um, they're in, in in broader concept, but they uh, certainly uh, can be uh, narrowed down to discuss those things. They uh, are uh, give you a couple of examples, and these are pretty much direct quotes. Demonstrate. Did you pick up on the word demonstrate? Yeah. Like you've got to do take action. This is quote. Right. Demonstrate a respect and appreciation for individual and cultural differences. So it doesn't say tolerated or, you know, don't fight or don't hit no one because they don't believe what you believe. It says you got to demonstrate a respect. Now, demonstrating a respect and appreciation, in other words, you've got to accept it and show that you support it. Uh, this is kind of a dangerous thing, depending on your religion, please, uh, depending on your parental beliefs and what the parents believe. Uh, they could very well start to go against, you know, the home home uh, teachings, assuming a child's getting reared in their homes. But um, here's another one. Recognize, accept, respect, and appreciate individual differences. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Now, depending on what those differences are, I'm not sure I would want my child to respect them. I may say, you know, please don't, you know, say anything to hurt that person's feelings or don't, you know, don't get in, don't uh, get in a confrontation, just, you know, just move on past that. But I certainly, on certain situations, don't want my child respecting somebody's differences. Another yeah, like one homosexuality? Would be, well, another one would be, Respect alternative points of view. Again, I may say, okay, you know, that's that person's opinion. 
you have we have our opinion we're not going to fight them we're not going to make an issue of it but we're certainly not going to respect it we don't respect that uh, for example um, you may have someone that is a uh, homosexual and they want you to respect them being a homosexual well you may accept it you may have to accept it you may have to tolerate it but if you're a religious person or your parental upbringing says we don't you know we don't respect that like kind of lifestyle then you can't be trying to make these little kids respect it well in the school systems by the year 2020 in four more years because these these are a part of the plan 2020 not only for Alabama but I suspect pretty much most of our nation here uh, there are our, our little kids are going to start these value systems that they call they call these competencies they're going to start to introduce these now there are pages of these things a lot of them emphasize community member and uh, doing your part in the workforce et cetera et cetera it kind of sounds like a socialistic plan so when we talk about common core in the big picture of the standards being lined up with the assessment to collect data and then what are they doing with data and how they're doing it, we're actually talking about education reform. If we would just replace the words common core with education reform, which the common core state standards are spearheading the change. Every pretty much every change we're doing in our school system, school model, is linked to the standards, either directly or indirectly. So, the big picture, <clears throat> education reform, the main parts that are affecting us. There's three main parts. One is to start to place the kids on a career pathway in grade eight, and number two, start to introduce these competency slash value systems to the little kids when they're very, very young, grades K through 2 and grades 3 through 5, reinforce them through the 12th year. I call them indoctrination is the word I use. Yeah. So it's a socialist education model. Matter of fact, I was talking to a uh, news anchor uh, last month, and I had the uh, Alabama documents and plans with me, and showed him about the assessments and the data collection and how they plan to use this data uh, to put the kids on the career pathway in grade 8. And, and I never even got to the value systems. And about 40 minutes into our discussion, I said, you can see where uh, we're um, starting to, uh, uh, that this mirrors the European socialist education model. And he, he kind of said, uh, what? Socialism? said, how, how do you get make this socialism? I said, well, sir, I said, we're talking about a government-owned, data-driven program to place kids on a career pathway in grade 8. I said, what would you call it? I mean, you can call it anything you want, but it's a socialist model. And at that point in time, he started to get defensive and, uh, because – you know, he, I, the, the facts were staring him in the face. He started to get defensive and said, but, 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 but what, what do the parents have a vote, uh, have a voice? I said, well, sir, first of all, it's not up and running full up right now in the state. I said, we still got four more years to go to year 2020. But I said, uh, I think the politically correct answer is absolutely the parents are going to have a voice. I said, even in Europe, in most of those countries in Europe, if the parents want, they can change the career pathway. I said, the issue is over a period of time, most parents become just another, it becomes a norm to accept that the schools are now driving the education model of the kids, yeah. that the government knows what's best for the kids. <clears throat> and that brings in the third part that we haven't talked about. <clears throat> well, can I, can I stop you right there before you get sure. into the third part? You, you said something about data collection. Now, to me, the way I think of data collection is kind of like a big spy machine. They're going to start keeping information, personal Financial, family information, in addition to grades and, you know, 
their records of their learning. That's going to be in, in this involved regarding every single student. They're going to have a dossier on uh, everybody, and it's going to be like Big Brother. Well, wrong? first of all, here's the part, Larry, that I have problems. Uh, we, I have problems with people starting to understand what you see today and what you think you know today is not what is going to be in reality 10 years from today. Most of us can only see maybe 15 minutes ahead of time or an hour ahead or during the day we got schedules, and we're looking at today, we might be looking at this week, but we're not looking five and 10 years down the road. So the point you're making there is a very good point. <clears throat> The, once you get the processes, because, you know, if you just step back and say, forget the names that they use, like Common Core State Standards, and uh, we use ACT for the assessments, and, you know, the data is being collected and going into the P20 longitudinal data system. Forget the names, okay, and look at the processes. Look at we got a roadmap. We got a way, we got a way to um, start to indoctrinate the kids by aligning all our course material and inputs with the standards. All right, so you got these standards, which we, you know, you can talk about the standards. They're poor standards. They call them college and career ready, but what's the definition of college and career ready? And who made that definition and who's in control of that? That's just a marketing term. I mean, give me a break. I mean, they use it like it's for real and everybody should know what we're talking about, but Quite frankly, what are what are college and career ready? So they you got your you got these standards. They're kind of like the train, and then you start lining up your tracks. You start pulling your putting your rails down. Okay, these are your assessments. These are your data. You start aligning your curriculum. All your various types of curriculum aligned with the standards, so the data can be collected with the assessments. And they're uh, they're collecting data. When I say on the assessments, now notice I used the word assessments. I didn't use the word test. When I use the word assessments, I'm talking about them being pulled out of class a lot, and given these assessments, <clears throat> which are not the same as a chapter test or a quiz on this uh, book that they're reading or a semester exam on the material they're reading. These assessments are totally different, okay? They're not hey, like... Would it be how fast you're becoming a good little communist? Well, the assessments, and, and, and the thing is, they can change this down the road. And who's going to change it and what they're going to change it to? They, it can get so confusing that people... People can't even keep up with it right now, but I'm just trying to tell you what you're seeing today is not what you'll see 10 years from today if we don't stop this. Yeah, no, but and, it, see and it's pattern, already we, we, it's we, already we can see the pattern and we can kind of predict exactly where these people are going, can we? Well, it, they're already uh, you know when we're talking today, they're already 10 years ahead of us. But the data that they can collect, they're already collecting the data that's profiling the kid. They're already doing that. Okay, data is a big, big marketing tool. They're already profiling our kids. That's how they're going to be able to start placing them on a career pathway in grade eight. A lot of parents, when they hear, uh, when they say, "Well, our kids are getting these assessments," they think, "Well, they're getting assessments on how good they do in math. Two plus two is four." Well, if you're using Common Core math, you could be 2 plus 2 is 5, and you can still get it right. But the point is, parents think that it's just academic information they're collecting off of these assessments. That's not true. They're collecting information, psychological as well as career interest information, off of these assessments. That's how they're able to profile the kids, and we'll be able to profile the kids and start to put them on a career pathway uh, Alabama's targeting grade eight. I would assume. All right. Well, hey, hey, Mike, uh, the music's yep. coming on in the background, letting us know we got our final break here. Hey, folks, we got another 15 minute segment. <clears throat> Stay tuned. You're going to learn something.
Now live from coast to coast and around the globe, more real talk, the kind you want, on Liberty Works Radio Network. And welcome back to the final segment of this Friday afternoon edition of the Truth Attack Hour. My guest this afternoon is Mike Parsons. He is our local expert on Common Core, probably a national expert, and right now he's telling us about some of the dangers, mortal dangers, of Common Core. Now, Mike, we were discussing something right before we got rudely interrupted. It related to all this data. Can you continue? Well, I was just saying they're already collecting the data, uh, and and they can uh, change their data points, uh, obviously, at will. But you know, they're already collecting the data, profiling the kids as it is. What other data they will collect 15 years, 20 years, 30 years from now, I have no idea. It's all speculation at that point in time. What I can tell you is that today they're not only collecting the academic data, they're also collecting the career interests and psychological information of our kids. Now, we have, we've only been doing this for... Uh, what, three years? We're on our fourth year right now. So, you know, they haven't been able to take a child from the first grade or pre-K and take them all the way through the 12th grade and collect that data and profile them. So this is all in the experimentation, if you will. We're all just one big national exper- uh, experiment yeah, but uh, it's using it's our kids. It's difficult to envision that where exactly where this is headed. There's going to be a government-possessed <laughs> dossier. It, it, it on is, every hey, living American, it it has already got a leg up on it. I, I'm that's that's where we're going today in Alabama, and, and I only got a few minutes, so it's what what we want to talk about. You want to talk about yeah, parent, what, uh, parents, uh, the, the the government, the federal government, and the state government starting to become uh, have more say on the child than the parents. Or you want to talk about the laws that we're passing here in the state of Alabama right now that are supporting the Obama administration's education reform plan that uh, last year were just uh, uh, what they call principles that they were pressuring the states to do, that now we have uh, supermajority uh, Republicans in uh, both the House and Senate uh, in Montgomery, Alabama, and believe it or not, those Republicans out there are promoting the Obama initiatives to solidify this education reform plan. So which one do you want to talk about? Because we can't talk about them both. Well, the, the latter, since you've already devoted some time to it. <clears throat> All right. Well, uh, let me give you some examples. We're uh, Right now we have a uh, um, well, we we tried to pass a bill last year that would have repealed Common Core, the assessments, and the data. You collect, in other words, all three are connected, and we were going to gut them out of our education system. All right, as soon as that bill was killed by a longtime Democrat that was now running as a Republican, and he threatened to veto, uh, threatened to filibuster the bill and killed it, Governor Bentley signed Executive Order Number 6 and created what we call a P-20 longitudinal data system and placed it in the Department of Labor. Now, you might ask, what does a P-20 longitudinal data system, what is that animal? And I will tell you, that is that is the all public school student data is going to be piped into the Department of Labor and combined with, did you know we have a workforce council established in partnering with education in Alabama? Did you know no. that? No. We have an actual council that's called the Workforce Council, and it's going to be, uh, so all our student data is going to be combined with workforce requirements, it's going to all be centralized in the Department of Labor. And guess what? You know how people are saying, they used to say all your data is kept in the school system. It goes down to the supercomputer in Mobile. No one gets their hands on it. Well, guess what? <clears throat> all this data, student data and workforce requirements, can now be shared with third parties. So 
they say, well, your student data is protected under the FERPA laws, Family Education Rights Privacy Act is what FERPA is. And in case your audience, some people out there don't understand that, what that means is to use student information, uh, you're supposed to get parental consent. Well, the FERPA laws is what that is. You got to get parental consent to use student information. Well, the Obama administration in 2012 administratively changed the FERPA laws. Did you get the word administratively yeah. changed? To where they can allow greater access of sharing information without parental consent. So now we're putting all this, they're trying to pass legislation in Montgomery right now. By the way, the P20 longitudinal data system is one critical piece of this common core implementation. Just to make it very clear, this is a critical piece that's required. So now, instead of just leverage uh, the Obama administration pressuring us to do it, we're about to make that law with a supermajority of Republicans down in Montgomery. And you know why we're about to do that? Because the big money interests, the Business Council of Alabama, wants Common Core. They want us to take and use taxpayer dollars to train kids how to do technical skills and have a job waiting for them on the end, uh, at the end of the 12th grade. Now, that may sound real good, but what we're doing is we're turning over the career of our children to the government. We're actually turning it over to the business council is what we're doing. So people need to think, do we want a free capitalist competitive environment or do we just want big brother telling us where we should go and what we should do and when we enter the workforce we need to just be happy we're put where we're put matter of fact one of the quotes in one of alabama department of education's own document says enter the workforce satisfied in their chosen career pathway that is something i would have thought i would have read in a communist document <clears throat> so we're, we're about to pass that P20 longitudinal data system into law. I think most of the states in our nation already have a P20 longitudinal data system. And what that means is that's all the data from the student from inception into the system till they enter the workforce. At least that's what they say today, till they enter the workforce. You know, next year they may say till they're age 60. I don't know. We're going to collect that data. The counselors are going to be trained how to look at the data, look at the workforce requirements, and help place a kid, help place a student in a suitable pathway that meets not only the student's uh, career interests, but also meets the local, regional, or global economy's needs. Go to the Department of Education in Alabama and read their web page if you haven't done that. Read so, what their mission is. So in is. essence, our kids are going to be basically put on a conveyor belt. Well, now the trick is, the out is, the parents can always change this. And, and, and the thing is, it's not up and running full steam right now. See, they're slowly, every year, they're passing legislation and there's changing processes in the school. Every year. It's like that little frog in a pot of uh, right. warm water. They just keep turning it up to the skin to peel it off. By the time you realize it, it's too late. You're going to be fried. Incredible. Incredible. Well, you give us your opinion on two, two, two things. I want to know where you, you give us a prediction of where this is really headed. And then after you do that, <laughs> tell us what we can do to stop it. Well, I'd uh, where we're headed, if we don't if we don't stop it, is you're about to turn your child over to the government. Dot. Period. I mean, you're about to have the government be able to come in and dictate what your child does and when they do it. Uh, let me give you an example. Did you know that the federal government drafted a policy in December? Uh, they, uh, it was released by the, uh, the United States Department of Education and the United States Department of Health and Human Services outlining their primary role in the development of the nation's children. And here's what it quotes. Here's the quote. 
It is the position of the departments that all early childhood programs and schools recognize families as equal partisans in proving children's development, learning, and wellness across all settings and over the course of their children's development and educational experiences. In other words, they're starting to redefine the word families. What do you mean when we say families? They're trying to say right now they're starting to throw out there from uh, the federal government that the, that the Department of Education and Health Services is part of the family. Wow. I'm, I'm telling you, it, it is just a matter of time. So where you're going is... And, and, you know, now let's face it, there's a lot of kids born out of wedlock that are in bad homes, and we have social services that should be able to take these kids and find them a good home. You know, if they're being mistreated at home because of a single parent or something like that, and, and of course, a lot of single parents do a great job with their kids, but there's some that are born out of wedlock with a single parent that is not in a good situation, or it may be a child in a yeah, even with uh, two parents, it's not in a good situation. There are parents out there that aren't doing their job as parents. There's a lot of parents out there that aren't doing their job. So if, if we think because of this we need to redefine in our entire nation what parenting is and let the government come in and dictate to us what the needs of our children are, you are just about to get it. The big, big, big picture of what this education reform is, you're about to turn over the education of your child to the federal slash state government. They will decide what's best for your child. They will provide the mental health services. They will provide the social skills, the counseling, the psychiatrists, the, uh, the dentists. They will provide all these services and take care of that child and guide that child onto the proper pathway based on the data that they're collecting. Well, you left out political <clears throat> indoctrination, which I think is a part of it. Well, that yeah, that absolutely that's that the indoctrination is a part of it. Uh, the the child's going to come to respond to the government, not to the parent. That's oh yeah, what I'm saying the parent the parent's going to start to uh, become a moot point. The uh, and, and and people hear this, and here's the thing: they say it can't happen in America. They hear this stuff, they don't believe it. Uh, everything I say, except for some of the speculation that I've acknowledged, that you know I can't guess five or ten years from now, but this is where we're going. But everything I've said on the content of socialist model uh, indoctrination with the value systems uh, and uh, transformation of education system, I can back up with Alabama's own documents. This isn't a matter of guesswork. It's a matter of just pure fact. Just read the material. It's there in black and white. <coughs> now, one point I want to do, and I don't know how much time we got, but we I got want to make sure few, I get this uh, About point. a minute, probably. All right, let me get to this point. First of all, I have a Facebook site, Save Alabama's Values in Education. People are welcome to go to Save Save Alabama's values and education. Two, what can you do? If you're listening to this program and you really care, you can uh, make sure you know what your uh, elected officials are doing. And you can call them and let them know you're uh, watching them. Last night I was at a Tea Party meeting, and I was asking them what had they done since I'd been there last year. I told them about these bills, several bills in Montgomery right now that are supporting the Obama transformation agenda and basically reducing parental rights. I said, how many of you are aware of this? None of them were aware of it. I said, well, you were given a choice last year to get on my save database. If you'd been on it, you would have been getting emails from me telling you what is happening and asking you to call your representatives. I said, so all you want to do is uh, come to a meeting and say, gee, everything's bad, we're about to lose our country, and you really care, and then you go home and watch TV and you do yeah, nothing. Okay. That's the condition of America. Yeah, apathy is alive and well. You got it right. Hey, Mike, the muses come on and let us know the end of the program's arrived. As always, you are a wealth of information and a great guest for a program. Thank you, Larry. And, folks, be sure to listen to the great programs here on this network, and be sure to have a great weekend. Come back next week. Roll Tide.